What is behind the sudden escalation of fatal road crashes during the festive season? And how does the RTMC ensure that its mandate is fulfilled? Why are there calls to introduce minimum sentences for negligent and reckless driving? What will it take for all drivers to adhere to responsible driving habits? What time is it? It's question time. Hello and welcome to the show. My name is Mpo Tseidu. Transport Minister Dibua Peters addressed the media in Midrand yesterday as part of an update on progress report regarding the state of the festive season road safety campaign. Minister Peters indicated that more than 800 people lost their lives on the roads in a period of 18 days between December, zero, uh, December the 1st rather, and uh, December 19th. She also reiterated that more law enforcement officials will be deployed to ensure that people stick to the rules of the road. More than 3,000 motorists have been arrested in the same period, that is. Their charges ranged from drunken driving, speeding and reckless behavior, amongst others. Meanwhile, the Automobile Association of South Africa urges all drivers to consider road and weather conditions of the route they use, including at their various destinations. We are live, and therefore you can call us and air your views. The numbers to dial 0891104210. Our Twitter handle at question time to four. But before we get into the discussion, here's what Minister Dipur Peters had to say. Drivers largely contribute 23.8% of the road fatalities. Some of those drivers were innocent <coughs> and responsible road users and were made to lose their lives prematurely by those who flagrantly flouted the rules of the road. Some of the deceased drivers were the major cause of these avoidable road crashes as they deliberately overtook on barrier lines, overtook on blind spots, were traveling at high speed, were under the influence of liquor, while some were fatigued and never cared to just stop for a moment. Well, that's the minister there, but uh, my guest today, Simon Zwane, Road uh, Traffic Management Corporation spokesperson, and joining us from our Hatfield studio is uh, Leighton Beard. He's the Automobile uh, Association of South Africa spokesperson, that is AA South Africa. Gentlemen, let me welcome you. Um, well, we know uh, mm -hmm. what are the causes uh, for this accident. It's, it's appalling. How can we stop? It's bad. Uh, you know, it's what I've called uh, the, the Stembiso Dombela phenomena mm -hmm. that's behind this. Young, upward mobile African people got money to buy liquor and are reckless on the roads. Vrpa. Vrpa, you call the minister calls that, yes. Yes. Yeah. And this guy was caught driving at 223 kilometers an hour. Mm. Mercedes Benz six twenty six uh, C sixty three. Now this is what is behind uh, likely this uh, increase in, in fatalities on the roads. So and what is it going to take to stop this or to reduce? We have spoken. Uh, we're done speaking. We need to tighten uh, law enforcement now. That's why Minister talks about uh, the Department of Justice and, and, and the MPA coming into the party as well to tighten uh, the, the, the laws and, and reclassify traffic offenses mm -hmm. so that uh, the, the sentences that are, are issued can be tighter. I mean, this person get, for driving at 223 kilometers an hour gets only a suspended uh, license. There's no community service, nothing, and it goes home. I mean, we think it sends the wrong message altogether. Okay. We want sentences that will send a proper message. Yes, we accept uh, the swift justice that happened there will send a, a good message, but this, the, the sentence must be taken. Okay. Let's check with the AA as well. Um, what, what is your feeling? What will it take to reduce this, uh, the, the, the road carnages? Well, good afternoon to you, Paul. You know, I, I've been sitting here watching Simon, and I've, got, I've you know, I've, I've had a flashback because uh, exactly a year ago, I think Simon and I were in this very studio, and we were yes. talking about exactly the same problems. Yep. Um, 
at exactly the same time. And, um, you know, it just doesn't seem that the problem is being sorted out. Yes, we need uh, our drivers to, to, to change their attitude. And I think the minister mentioned yesterday that up to 80% um, of, the, of the fatalities were as a, as a result of human error, mm -hmm. uh, not because of damage to the cars or because of, you know, uh, the weather conditions, but it was human factors, and that's very critical. But at the same time, we need a strategy to deal with this, and we need a strategy to be implemented, and that strategy needs to be holistic, and it needs to be implemented sooner rather than later. Otherwise, I fear if that isn't done, uh, Simon and I will be sitting in the studio at the end of 2017 having this discussion in 2018, and the numbers are just simply going to increase year on year. We are very concerned as the AA um, that we, at this point in time, in the middle of December, are already seeing a 17% increase over the same period of 2015. Uh, and for us, that sends a very early signal that when the figures are tallied at the end of the year, uh, looking at the festive season period, we're going to definitely see an increase in the numbers, and it could be one of the worst we've seen in many years. But what is the strategy then? Perhaps just share with us some of uh, the elements in the strategy then. Well, I mean, Simon will tell you that uh, the Road Traffic Management Corporation held a, um, uh, uh, an endeavor with a number of the police chiefs and the metro police chiefs and traffic officials uh, down in Durban in mid-December, which is great. Uh, we would like to see the fruits of those discussions coming forward now. We would like to see implementation of plans. We would like to see the strategy to be implemented, um, more focus on education. Um, I mean, Simon has spoken about some issues such as harsher penalties, um, but we need to see consequences. We need to have a system where the drivers in our country see that there are consequences for their actions and we need to see the government actually stepping up and implementing the strategy that they've been talking about for a long time. Lucas, you are calling us from around Gauteng. Welcome. Yes, thank you, sir. How are you? I'm well. Thanks for the call. Yes, so, uh, my, 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 my comment is that uh, most of the accidents are caused by high speed. Yes. So I don't know whether the government can able to maximize I speak limit to 130 at least because uh, it seems like uh, uh, traffic officers are having a, a big challenge regarding the speed. Yeah, but they are breaking 120. What mm -hmm. more of 130? Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah, what I'm saying, the cars that are manufactured. Oh, I see. The cars should be governed to that. Okay. To be minimized to 120. Or okay. 130. Okay. Thanks very much. Well, um, it's a valid question, I guess. If you're going uh, to allow um, a C63 to push, um, you know, up to 320. Yeah. So why, why allow it to be on the road if it's illegal to push it to that extent? Yeah, I think we'll, uh, in the middle to long term, we'll have to look at uh, technology. Mm -hmm. I mean, we know in all uh, interventions and campaigns that need behavior change, that behavior change takes time. I mean, you can, I can cite to the example, for instance, on the HIV and AIDS. That behavior change has not happened sufficiently. And we are winning that war simply because we have had m interventions of uh, medical science, yes. uh, <coughs> treatment and drugs and all of that. Even here, even I think eventually we'll have to look at into what kind of technological interventions need to be brought in. Is it possible to have, you know, already in the high class vehicles, they have all of these technologies that are able to keep you in your lane. Some of them, you, the car won't start if you are drunk and all yes. of that. Can we bring those technologies also into the more la common uh, vehicles? Maybe, maybe <coughs> that kind of thing. But I think it's, it's really got to do, I know that there's always this human factor argument, and I think it's got to do with that. Because, I mean, yes. you go to other countries, um, with, with, when, you, when you land at the airport, uh, they tell you that to the hotel it's going to take you an hour and a half. And when you check the hotel is uh, 45 kilometers away. And you wonder, why does it take me an hour and a half? And they say, no, we drive um, within, the, st within the speed limit yeah. here. But let's take Malemo. Malemo, you are in the free state. Welcome. Yes, how are you, Daddy? Yes, I'm not in the free state. 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 We have to focus more on education. 
Eh, and the system is eh, long for eh, most South Africa. Yes, we just have a lot of things about what what the lessons. Eh, this and then it will because most only after K fifty three. Then after K fifty three, ah, by ah, ah, practice a goalie. Then a lot drive. Driving technique and offensive and defensive driving on the road. Most South Africa mutu mule mwa itukole. Or na ugei na experience wrong. Or a kono re abele potential or re. Abono this thing can cause accident and the lower day abu daga tlam fudofi. So if we gara ra South Africa man ra focus a holo ya dunia ya education. Okay. Eh, regarding the liberty, I'm coming from organization. I want to check out how community organization. Then, if we talk about if they are great, they will teach that transport education is more for it. I see. So, that. yeah, we 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 have noticed that uh, Harry ran a deep the, the workshop. Yes. But when they are eager, or they they want to 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 be taught. But what about road work? Road safety. Eh, uh, and. Uh, if we are serious about tackling the South Africa, then I don't want to I will not care focus on the education. But as we go from the tire to the colony, or Lord, they are expired. Then they 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 go ready to enter. They did a mammo, but a mammo is fine. They do have some food work. Then as we everything go, they simply try to colony. As we go colony, that is my level. Colony we. Malamu are there calling us from the Free State, emphasizing the importance of education and training before one is uh, actually a certified or a legal driver on the roads of South Africa. But we're going to take a quick break. When we return, we'll continue the show. 89 is the number to dial. Give us a call. What do you think um, lies behind this high rate of crashes? Because these are not accidents. They are crashes. This is question time. It's more than a gift. It's capturing summer magic. Get a Galaxy S7 Edge with Tab 3 Lite Bundle for $6.99 per month on my MTN Choice Flexi 200. Plus your choice of a Gear VR or an accessory kit. The Galaxy S7 Edge, now in blue coral. Water wise, water is an essential need. The scarcity of it could lead to loss of many lives, including livestock, plants, and much more. It requires us to use it sparingly and responsibly in times of need, failing which our taps and sanitation will not function. For more on water and weather issues, stay tuned to News Today, every Friday at quarter to five Central African time. SABC News, making you water wise. Welcome back. You're still watching Question Time. And indeed, you can call us and air your views. The numbers to dial 89 My guest today, Simon Zwani, is the spokesperson of the Road Traffic Management Corporation. And from our Hetfield studio, Leighton Beard, he's the uh, AA, um, or uh, Automobile Association of South Africa. He's the spokesperson there as well. Let's go to Pretoria. Uh, Cabello, welcome. Uh, good afternoon. Yes, sir. Welcome. Well, I just see the focus is on people who are drinking and uh, forgetting that drugs are too much here in South Africa. People are using drugs and then they don't have a mechanism which they can make them to personalize so that they can check their on the drug uses because on the road these people are sniffing cocaine and they are sleeping while they are driving. Wow. I can see the peer issue but they can handle it. But the bad focus on the drug issue now. Thank you very much, Kabel. Yeah, I think Impo, he's got a valid point. Uh, the use of drugs and mm. alcohol by people who are driving and those who are working mm. is a problem. Uh, but we also need to focus on the pedestrians because if you look at the statistics, the highest number of people who are dying are pedestrians. In and fact, they don't get punished. Yes. In fact, if you look at it properly, uh, collisions with 
with pedestrians are number one, mm -hmm. followed, followed by uh, where vehicle overturns uh, with full passengers and people, die, and then there are head-on collisions. Yes. So we need to get these pedestrians out of the road because jaywalking is the one that's proving to be a problem. But are but are not just jaywalking. Uh, I mean, I'll give you examples. On the N1, right on the N1, you have an area like Mokopong, na bomb spray. Yes. People cross from the other side of the freeway, of the N1. You know, you go to, um, uh, 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 in the south here, uh, uh, around Lens, there's, yes. there's an informal the settlement N12. there on the Close N12. Level, yes. yes. People just, you know, they try to put fences, they go and cut it. Yes. There's a bridge, they don't use it. Mm -hmm. There are no consequences. They're saying they get robbed on the bridges and all of those excuses that they have. But there must be consequences. Let's and that is why yesterday the meeting with the traffic chiefs, uh, the minister emphasized that there should also be consequences for, for pedestrians. Okay, let's take Francois. Francois, you are in the Western Cape. Eastern Cape. Eastern, oh yes, Francois, how are you? You've been gone for a Very while. Very well, thanks, and Paul. And Yes, we are well. Thanks for the call. My pleasure, and thanks for taking my call. You look stunning, and compliments of the season oh, thank to you. you and your guest in the studio there. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Francois. Yeah, um, a quick one, yes. um, Paul. Yes. Uh, you know, uh, we have to keep in mind that cars are made very fast, okay? Uh, therefore, this time of the year, you know, it seems as if uh, deaths, uh, the death tolls on the road is inevitable and it is so sorry to say that but i think there is a solution okay i think a clarion call should be made you know uh, for churches to come together in a special prayer this time of the year so that there should be a, a heavenly intervention and i think that's the solution because government f from year to year you know uh, actually put in you know some measures in place to curb the death tolls and uh, you know all these um, uh, horrible accidents but it seems as if nothing's working but i think it's about time that uh, you know calls should be made for to churches and uh, preachers and everybody to call to god thank you very much Francois. thank you, you so will. much let's check I mean, you know something i don't know whether the aa this is your responsibility or part of your mandate um people don't seem to worry much about the state of their vehicles. As long as it's got fuel, oil and water, we're good to go. Yeah, it's a big problem. I mean, obviously, we would urge all people to make sure that their cars are roadworthy at all times. And um, I just want to take you back to something that Mala Moore has said. Um, you know, he spoke about education. Yes. I mean, that really is the critical factor here. Uh, we need to be educating our youth. We need to be educating children. We need to be telling people that, look, um, you know, driving safely needs to become a habit. Um, it's something that's very important. Unfortunately, in South Africa, we have very many licensed drivers. Everybody's got a license. But do we have competent drivers and I think therein lies the rub um, you know so it's education is absolutely critical when the AA sends a message out when we speak to uh, when we speak to people um, we often believe that we are speaking to that sector that is already um, converted we preaching to the converted we're telling them to check their cars but these are people that are checking their cars anyway we're telling people not to drink and drive these are people who don't drink and drive it's that sector of the population that we are not reaching that I think is very important and obviously year of after year after year the message gets spread don't drink and drive and as Cabello said don't use drugs and drive which is equally important the mm. message is there but people are simply not adhering to that message for whatever reason so severe consequences may be one solution but people need to see that consequences that there are consequences to their actions let's go to Soweto Nswaki welcome Nswaki hello hey I can now Nswaki Okay. This is an interesting topic. What is the problem with the people? Hey. We to a license to as a leader. Yes. As a leader, to contribute. It means this person has to be perfect. What's the name? That's why I get that L. You get my point. Yes. Yeah, so, are you saying that uh, Leonard drivers shouldn't be allowed on the road? <coughs> yeah, yeah, and learners, they can be allowed on the road with the instructor. 
Okay. That now today, these kids, whatever road, have a strategy license, see that? Mm-hmm. But what they were talking about, Ellie Kabobora, but we told us the license, why it's all a point. Yes, yes. Hey. So well, they are not experienced. And they are not going to the roadside. Mm. Baba Ruta K-53 is finished, K-53. Road signs are very, very important. Osun I hear you. Thank you very much for the call. Mm. She's talking about whether the, the drivers are competent or not. Yes. And they're putting that L because they don't have the confidence to drive. Either mm. because the driving school they went to didn't teach them properly, or they know that they didn't get the license through the proper channels. So this L mm -hmm. is to tell other motorists that please forgive me if I make mistakes. Uh, I'm a novice or I actually I'm taking chances I can't drive. Mm -hmm. And that, that, that is also an, uh, something that we have identified. Okay. That's why we're focusing on these DLTCs around the issues of corruption and how people are obtaining licenses because it is a major con contributor, contributor to this phenomenon. Okay, well, part of what the AA says is that, one, people must plan their routes, they must not rush, stop every two hours, drink lots of water, share the driving load, do not drink and drive, obey the rules, check tires, wear seat belt, do not be distracted. But the majority of accidents, it has been found, um, happen within, what within the the, the uh, destination of of the drivers or, or motorists which means that probably most of the uh, uh, the education should also be going to people who are uh, local say look i mean our message is sent to everybody um, who is a motorist and you know the tips that we give specifically towards the end of november and beginning of december are aimed at those people that are going to be on longer journeys where we tell people look obviously you need to be resting uh, you need to look after your cars but there's a lot of tips that apply to people who are maybe not going on long trips yes. for instance make sure that your car is in a good condition make sure that your tires are in a good condition i mean we recently did an event uh, the aa where we where we uh, looked at this very issue of tires mm. and worn or bald tires are extremely dangerous so we would urge people to do that um, you know this issue of fatigue on the 6th of December the American Automobile Association released a report in which they compared drowsy driving in other words people who are tired behind the wheel to drunk driving it's a huge problem and a lot of people just ignore it and they say oh, you know what it's fine I'll get to my destination in an hour I'm a little tired but I'll make it okay. no that's the wrong attitude but our message should be for everybody not only for people who are going on long trips but people across the board who are behind the wheel of a car now what happens to um Chenjerai who wants to go home and uh, Munorurama is not road worthy but they want to go home Chenjerai should either take a public transport back home leave that un unroadworthy unroadworthy vehicle here or get the vehicle in a state that is roadworthy and will take him and his family home safely and would not be a danger to other people on the road. Gentlemen, thank you very much for the time and we really hope that this carnage would come to a stop. It's, it's enough. It's, 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 this is too much. That was question time for today. A big thank you to my guests and to you for watching the show. For me and the crew, have yourself a safer journey and a wonderful time. I have a hot.